Hello and welcome to Acrylic Code. Today we have a new touch designer tutorial on this animation. I will show you how to create this step by step and you can add your own touch and be creative. Before we move on, please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to support us into making more tutorials. We also recently launched our Patreon with different tiers to offer all touch designer files, online tools to create generative art, as well as personalized classes. I will leave the link to the Patreon in the comments for anyone who is interested. Now back to today's tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to use a line technique that we learned from this video. I will leave the link to this in the description in case you want to have a look. Now let's start with a rendering network. Let's press tab and we're going to create a circle sop. Right click at the out and create a geometry. Press tab and let's add a camera and a render top. Click Alt N and drag to create a null at the end of the network and turn on the display flag. Let's add the line material, drag and drop it to the geo and select parameter material. Right click between the render and the null, go to insert operator, attach a transform and in the parameter window let's set the background alpha to 1 and toggle on comp over background color. Go to the parameter window of the render next and in the common tab set the resolution to 1280 by 1280. Lastly, let's go to the parameter window of the circle sop and let's set the divisions to 100 and the arc type to open arc. Now let's make some space in the beginning of the network and right click in the connecting line between the circle sop and the geo, go to insert operator and let's attach a copy sop. Usually instancing is way more efficient, but I couldn't find a way to incorporate instancing into this technique since you cannot pass a width attribute to the line of the instancing comp and this was the problem I was facing with this tutorial. And the solution to this was to use a copy sop. Let's set the number of copies in the parameter window to 50 and right now all the circles are piled up on top of each other. If we slowly increase the translate x value, then the circles will separate and move to the right. Since this is all out of frame now, let's go to the camera and we're going to change the translate parameter so that it's centered and the object is on the top part and inside the frame. Ultimately, the values were 2.26, minus 1.9 and 8.2 for the camera and 0.092 for the translate x of the copy sop. Now for the next step we want to add a new width channel and control it with a chop. To do this, let's right click on the connecting line between the copy and the geo, go to add operator and attach a sop to chop. Press Alt N to attach a null and let's right click at the out to create a chop to sop to convert the whole thing back to sops. If we zoom in here we notice that all the copies of the circles are attached together through this line. This happens because the chop to sop doesn't recognize the circles as individual shapes but rather draws the whole image as a continuous line from the beginning to the end. The circles will be detached again as soon as we attach the geo as the input of the chop to sop. Great, now let's right click on the connecting line between the sop to and the null, go to add operator and add a pattern chop. In the parameter window go to the channel tab and we're going to rename the channel to width. For now let's set the type of the pattern to constant. Then let's right click right before the null, go to attach operator and add a merge chop. Attach the pattern chop as an input of the merge. Now the trick is if we go to the parameter window of the chop to sop, we can add the width as a new attribute and reference the width in the attribute scope. So the channel scope is this chop and the attribute scope is what's actually going into the geometry. So basically this pattern is giving the geometry the width attribute and the line material is going to use this width attribute. So if we go to the parameter window of the pattern, we see that by changing the value of the amplitude, we're controlling the width of the line. From here, we can set the type of pattern to ramp and have the line go from thick to thin. And then again, increase or decrease the amplitude to achieve the wanted effect. Right now, the line looks gray and this is because by default, the color is set to gray. So let's go to the line tab in the parameter window and set the line far color to a shade of white. 
Another interesting effect to animate would be to set the type of pattern to sign and then play around with the face values. But for this one, we'll stick to the ramp type. Now let's go to the beginning of the network and right after the circle, we're going to attach another transform. In here, we notice that if we change the rotate Y value, we get this cool effect. So let's go ahead and animate this by typing in seconds times 20. Now let's go to the parameter window of the copy, let's set the rotate Y value to 2, and the magic happens when we increase the value of the rotate Z parameter. I'll set it to 14, and we'll get this very interesting movement of the lines going from thick to thin while it's rotating. Now for the next step, we're going to introduce some color. Let's make some space after the render top, right click on the line, go to add operator and we're going to attach a ramp top. The reason why we attach the ramp directly to the render is so that we can get the same resolution of the render of 1280 by 1280. Then in the parameter window you can choose the color you like. I went with blue. For the next step I'm going to add a multiply after the render and attach the ramp as the second input of the multiply. If the color doesn't look bright enough, we can just go back to the line material and set the line far color to completely white. And if we don't want the left part here to transition to completely black, we can go back to the ramp, add a point to the left and play around with the hue and saturation to brighten the color. Great, now we have the base and we're going to create more of this by replicating and rotating a couple of times and then compositing everything together. So let's right click after the multiply, go to add operator and we're going to attach a transform first. In the parameter window we're going to rotate by 180 degrees. Copy paste the transform twice and for the second one we'll set the rotate to zero. Now let's press tab and create a composite. We'll select the multiply and the transforms and attach everything to the input of the composite. Then connect the comp to the out and in the beginning we'll not see anything and this is because the operation is set to multiply and everything is getting multiplied by zero. So let's go ahead and set the operation to over. Right now the circles look way too intense and this is because they're overlapping. Let's go to the parameter window of the transform and we'll translate in the y direction to get the shapes to separate. And we'll do the same thing with the other shape. From here we can change the values of the camera or the size of the circle to improve the proportions of the animation. Once you get the base, you can be creative and try out different things, see what works for you. But this is it for this simple tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and supporting. Let me know if you like it or if you have any questions or tutorial suggestions. I'm curious to see what you come up with, so if you recreate this, be sure to tag us. And I will see you next Friday with a new video. Until then, have a great time. Bye!